Hello again, welcome back. So let's set up our melee attack trace. So I'm inside the player base. I'm in our attack trace function and over here on the left I'm going to add a variable. It will be an integer and it will be called strength. So when we attack I want to do a sphere trace by... no no no. I want to do a sphere trace for objects. We want to do it a little bit differently this time. So we are going to go into our project settings and set up another object type. So object type uh, minus the type. <laughs> so for the new object channel we will call it hit. We'll just call it hit. That'll work. Actually, we'll call it mm, enemy because hit we can use for the tool. So for the object types, we will make array. And we want to see if we're hitting an enemy type. So if we look over here, we can either establish a scene event to fire from, or we can just do straight from the character. I am going to add a scene component, because if we do it from the character, like from the mesh, it'll happen from down here, and I'm not very... Well, let's give it a shot. Let's see get actor location we'll try that get actor forward vector so we'll add to the world location the forward vector multiplied by a float so right click convert to a float and I'm gonna go a hundred units out and then we'll do that for the end. Radius is 10 and the draw debug type is for duration. So let's see how this looks. That works. That works pretty good actually. So we'll do it that way. Get actor location. Get the actor forward vector. I guess because last time I got the mesh is why it shot across the floor. <laughs> So we'll get the actor location for the start and the actor location plus the forward vector multiplied by 100 units, probably more, I'm going to say 175, and then a radius of 30. So we'll break the hit result at a branch so that if we hit something, we first check to see if the hit actor is valid because it's always good to do just validity checks just to make sure and if it is then we will apply damage now for the base damage the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to take my weapon info get it break it open and I am going to get a rand random float in range. So a random float in range from the minimum potency and the maximum potency. Take this over a little bit further. Then I'm going to round it. So we'll round whatever float it gets to get rid of the decimal numbers. And then I'm going to add my character's strength to it. So I'll take my strength and add this random float that's been rounded to get our base damage. Now we need to feed in an event instigator. And this will be get player controller and we'll feed in our player index because when we hit an enemy we don't want both players to get experience for it 
unless they're both hitting the enemy. So if one character's at the base building and the other character's gone off and gotten into combat, they might level up at different rates because one's actively out in the field. So when they actually apply damage to an actor of the enemy type, this will be fed into an array of actors so that when the enemy dies, it'll grant experience to the player controllers that actually damage it. I hope I explained that well. <laughs> it's very late where I'm at. So, well actually it's very early. So now let's go into our characters blueprint and we're gonna set up a new folder called enemy. And for right now we're just gonna create a blueprint class of a character that will be called enemy base underscore BP and for the mesh we're just gonna add the mannequin in for now Manny oh Manny drop him down 90 units probably have to go a little bit lower but we're doing it that way because oh I have that off because the capsule half height is 90 so this needs to drop 90 to offset and make sure that they're lined up the way they need to be. So for the mesh I'm gonna go down to its collision settings collision presets and go to custom and for the object type it's going to be an enemy and they are going to ignore the camera so we'll compile that real quick and over here do we have our debug duration turned on? Yes. Let's drag one of these bad boys out and double check that our hit is registering. Yeah. 175 might be a bit far. Let's go 150. Jump in with the other player real quick. But we're not able to hit each other. So this is not a PvP game. Could probably set it up a way to where maybe we could add a dual mode later on. That would be kinda cool. But we'll see. We'll we'll see. I don't wanna overscope. <laughs> so all right, so now we're doing some damage. Let's print out and see how much damage we are actually doing. So this return value is the actual damage that ended up being applied to the actor. Let's print that string. Print that string. Bam. So if I jump in, draw my sword, zero, zero, zero. Oh right, it's because this is that one that we first established. So if I equip the actual one, 8, 10, 12. Weird that it was going up in increments, but okay, cool. So I want my character strength to, actually in the player base, I'll just leave it at zero. And then we can go through and set it as a random number on each each player child so in the player blueprint first thing I want to do well not first this is like halfway through the video already <laughs> I'm gonna set this structure reference back to none and then the event graph that's not the event graph that's the event graph over on the draw weapon we will drag this this way add a branch and what we want to check is if our weapon info when broken open if the item ID is equal to empty if it is we don't want to be able to try to pull a weapon but if it's not then we can do our thing So right now, can't equip a weapon, pick it up, equip it, there we go, 12, 
12, 10, 11, 8. Cool. All right. All right, all right, all right. And only 10 minutes in. So. Now let's do the same thing for the tool function. So we'll grab our tool info. Get it. We're going to break it open, see if the item ID is equal to empty, and if it's not, then we can do our thing. We need to do a video on tidying soon, we'll do that, but for right now this is fine. So the way we have it set up right now, we won't actually be able to draw anything. I just set the tool info structure ref back to nothing. And we don't have a actual swap tool function yet, do we? Swap weapon. Equip tool. So what we can do is let's create a new function. Swap tool. This will take in an input, you guessed it, item info. It'll be tool info and we're gonna get our tool info break it open see if the item ID is equal to empty so we'll add a branch and if it is then we can just set our tool info to this but if it's not then we'll call our pickup item function and set it to our tool info. So now in our use item function, use item, use item, use item. These get hard to see later on. On our tool function, we'll call that swap tool. Drag it way over here so that we can feed in that incoming item and then remove the item. So now when I jump in, let me pick up this hatchet. First let me try to equip it. Can't do it. So, may have noticed that when I hit the E button, it actually picked up my hatchet. We will fix that post haste, but let me draw this sword. Yeah, it's working. All right, so what happened was when I equipped the tool, I need to do the same thing over here. We'll just drag this this way, and we will set actor collision. Set actor enable collision, set that to false. So now I can get sword, axe, If I hit E, it's not picking up. Put it away. Equip my sword. Still not put picking it up. But now I don't have one for the second player and they can't draw their thing. So I'm going to drop another one before we do the next video. But alright, so now we got some equip item functionality going on. Sweet. So I will see y'all in the next one. Bye-bye.